The Tragedy of Macbeth, Act 3, by William Shakespeare. Drama. Review and Anticipate. In Act 2, Lady Macbeth drugs Duncan's guards, enabling Macbeth to kill the king. Macbeth subsequently kills the guards, so that he can more easily blame them for the king's murder. Duncan's sons, Malcolm and Donalbane, flee, afraid that they will be assassinated by a kinsman eager to claim the throne. Because they run away, some suspect them of killing their father. As the act closes, it seems that Macbeth will be named king. Act 3 begins with Macbeth on the throne, as the witches had predicted. All seems to be going well for him, but he feels threatened by Banquo. Foras, the palace. Enter Banquo. Thou hast it now, King Cawdor, Blamus, all, as the weird women promised, and I fear thou playedst most foully for it. Yet it was said it should not stand in thy posterity, but that myself should be the root and father of many kings. If there come truth from them as upon thee, Macbeth, their speeches shine. Why by the verities on thee may good, may they not be my oracles as well, and set me up in hope? But hush, no more. Senate sounded. Enter Macbeth as king, Lady Macbeth, Lennox, Ross, lords, and attendants. Here's our chief guest. If he had been forgotten, it had been as a gap in our great feast, and all thing unbecoming. Tonight we hold a solemn supper, sir, and I'll request your presence. Let your highness command upon me, to which my duties are with most indissoluble tie forever knit. Ride you this afternoon? Aye, my good lord. We should have else desired your good advice, which still hath been both grave and prosperous in this day's council. But we'll take tomorrow. Is it far you ride? As far, my lord, as will fill up the time twixt this and supper. Go not my horse the better. I must become a borrower of the night for a dark hour or twain. Fail not our feast. My lord, I will not. We hear our bloody cousins are bestowed in England and in Ireland, not confessing their cruel parricide, filling their hearers with strange invention. But of that tomorrow, when therewithal we shall have cause of state craving us jointly. Are you to horse, adieu, till you return at night. Uh, goes fleance with you? Aye, my good lord, our time does call upon us. I wish your horse is swift and sure of foot, and so I do commend you to their backs. Farewell. Exit Banquo. Let every man be master of his time till seven at night. To make society the sweeter welcome, we will keep ourselves till supper time alone. While then, God be with you. Exit lords and all but Macbeth and a servant. Sirrah, a word with you. Attend those men our pleasure. They are, my lord, without the palace gate. Bring them before us. Exit servant. To be thus is nothing, but to be safely thus. Our fears in Banquo stick deep, and in his royalty of nature reigns that which would be feared. Tis much he dares, and to that dauntless temper of his mind he hath a wisdom that doth guide his valor to act in safety. There is none but he whose being I do fear, and under him my genius is rebuked, as it is said Mark Antony's was by Caesar. He chid the sisters when first they put the name of king upon me, and bade them speak to him. Then prophet like they hailed him father to a line of kings. Upon my head they placed a fruitless crown, and put a barren scepter in my grape, thence to be wrenched with an unlineal hand, no son of mine succeeding. If it be so, for Banquo's issue have I filed my mind. For them, the gracious Duncan, have I murdered, put rancors in the vessel of my peace only for them, and mine eternal jewel given to the common enemy of man to make them kings, the seeds of Banquo kings. Rather than so, come, fate, into the list, and champion me to the utterance. Who's there? Enter servant and two murderers. Now go to the door and stay there till we call. Exit servant. Was it not yesterday we spoke together? It was, it was so, so please, please your highness. highness. Well then, now, have you considered my speeches? Know that it was he in the times past which held you so under fortune, which you thought had been our innocent self. This I made good to you in our last conference, passed in probation with you. 
how you were born in hand, how crossed the instruments who wrought with them and all things else that might to half a soul and to a notion crazed say, thus did Banquo. You made it known to us. I did so and went further, which is now our point in second meeting. Did you find your patience so predominant in your nature that you can let this go? Are you so gospel to pray for this good man and his issue, whose heavy hand hath bowed you to the grave and beggared yours forever? We are men, my liege. Aye, in the catalogue ye go for men, as hounds and greyhounds, mongrels, spaniels, curs, sloughs, water rugs, and demi wolves are cleft all by the name of dogs. The valued file distinguishes the swift. The slow, the subtle, the housekeeper, the hunter, every one according to the gift which bounteous nature hath in him closed, whereby he does receive particular addition from the bill that writes them all alike, and so of men. Now, if you have a station in the file, not in the worst rank of manhood, say it, and I will put that business in your bosoms whose execution takes your enemy off. Grapples you to the heart and love of us who wear our health but sickly in his life, which in his death were perfect. I am one, my liege, whom the vile blows and buffets of the world hath so incensed that I am reckless what I do spite the world. And I another so weary with disasters, tugged with fortune, that I would set my life on any chance to mend it or be rid on it. Both of you know Banquo was your enemy. True, my lord. So is he mine and in such bloody distance that every minute of his being thrusts against my nearest of life. And though I could with barefaced power sweep him from my sight and bid my will avouch it, yet I must not. For certain friends that are both his and mine, whose loves I may not drop, but wail his fall, who I myself struck down, and thence it is that I to your assistance do make love. Masking the business from the common eye for sundry weighty reasons. We shall, my lord, perform what you command us. Though our lives... Your spirits shine through you. Within this hour at most, I will advise you where to plant yourselves. Acquaint you with the perfect spy of the time, the moment on't, for it must be done tonight, and something from the palace. Always thought that I require a clearness, and with him to leave no rubs nor botches in the work. Fleance, his son, that keeps him company, whose absence is no less material to me than is his father's, must embrace the fate of that dark hour. Resolve yourselves apart. I'll come to you anon. We are, we are resolved, resolved, my lord. I'll call upon you straight. Abide within. It is concluded. Banquo thy soul's flight. If it find heaven, must find it out tonight. Scene two, the palace.